Think about this. At the conclusion of creation in Genesis, God created the Garden of Eden, and it was a space created specifically for humans. And so it was a shared space, a place for humanity and God. But man's rebellion tarred the place, ruined the place. Now, this time, man is given the opportunity of creating a, spared, a shared space for them and God. So God created a shared space for him and us. We contaminated it. And now we're building a shared space for God and us. We're giving the opportunity of recreating, in one sense, the Garden of Eden for God. The tabernacle is the new Garden of Eden, and man is to be willing, the willing creator of this sacred space. Wow. God gives us the opportunity to create a place for him in the Exodus. But guess what? We have to follow protocol. He will not live in an unclean place. So we're, we're required to create a place for him. Now, here's something else. That's kind of scary. And it goes back to free will. Did you know God's presence in the Garden of Eden did not prevent Adam from rebelling? God was there in the Garden of Eden. That didn't prevent mankind from rebelling. God's presence was in Solomon's temple and it did not prevent Solomon or Israel from rebelling. God's presence on earth during the millennial reign. Remember, he's going to rule here for a thousand years. That doesn't prevent mankind from rebelling. And at the end, the, Gog, the final Gog Magog war happens. God's presence among us does not keep us from rebelling. Some people think, well, if God was here, just like if the, I'm not going to speed if, the, the, if I see the police officer. Okay, well, guess what? God's presence is going to be here and people are still going to want to rebel. Some people think, you know, that, well, uh, I may be a sinner, but when I die and go to heaven, I'm still going to go to heaven if I, even if I don't accept Jesus, let's say, okay? Well, guess what? You're going to rebel in God's presence, and God doesn't want that. So, <clears throat> get a load of this. How many of you know there's a 7,000-year time frame plan in God, Right? 7,000 years, seven days he rested. The 7,000th year is the millennial day, 1,000 years of rest. <clears throat> but you know what that millennial reign is about? I believe it's so that we can learn from history before the new heavens and the new earth come. After that 7,000th year, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, and God is going to start over. But God must have a deterrence for our wrong choices. God, through both his justice and his mercy, will not allow people with a free will to just rebel after the new heavens and the new earth. People think, well, during the millennia, or during the new heavens and the new earth, I'll never sin. No, the possibility will always, always be there. It was possible when Satan fell before earth was created to sin in God's presence. It was possible when God's presence was there with Adam. It was possible when God's presence was there with Israel. He's not going to take away our free will. He doesn't want a bunch of AI robot. He doesn't want that. So we always have to be free to choose, even in the new heavens and the new earth. And so what is he going to do to help deter us is found in Isaiah 66, verse 22 through 24. He says, as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make is going to remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it'll come to pass from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh is going to come and worship before me, says the Lord. And they're going to go forth and they're going to look upon all the carcasses of those people that have transgressed against me, where their worm will not die, neither will their fire be quenched, and they'll be abhorring to all flesh. So every week, every month, we get to look into hell. That is going to be God's deterrence from us. Oh, don't want to do that. He has to have a deterrence, but he also has to let us have a free will. 